So let's see how the major histocompatibility complex, class 1, presents itself on the cell surface and the process of which and how it does it. So here we have a normal cell and here we have a pathogen. Uh, this is the extracellular fluid and here is inside the cell. Now the pathogen, in this case a bacteria, enters the cell and goes into the cytosol, enters the nucleus and begins taking control and replicating. We call this endogenous. So this cell, let's just say now, is an infected macrophage. The cell fortunately has a cylindrical protein called protosome. protosome. And so this endogenous substance goes into this protosome and gets chopped up into fine shaped peptides. Same shaped peptides. Now these peptides are now floating in the cytosol. And these peptides then enters the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, within the cell through a channel called the TAP transport. So the peptides, or antigens, are now inside the endoplasmic reticulum, ER. Now within the ER is a protein called calnexin, which is bound to the unfinished or incomplete major histocompatibility complex class 1 molecule, trans already synthesized. Now it is missing the beta 2 domain. What calnexin does is that it allows beta 2 portion to bind to the MA MHC alpha portion, stabilizing the molecule, nearly completing the MHC class 1 complex. Now after the beta 2 portion is attached, calnexin disassociates before binding. Now before MHC class 1 can bind to any peptides, proteins caroticulin, ERPS, and tapsin has to bind to the MHC class 1 molecule. Allow, and this allows then a peptide, the antigen, to load and attach onto the alpha domains of the MHC class 1 molecule. Now once the MHC class 1 molecule has attached to the peptide and antigen, it then leaves the ER in an endosome, leaving the TAP complex. And so with this, it can then surface on the infected cell, and now is ready is ready to present itself to cytotoxic T killer cells waiting to be eliminated. So that was for MHC class 1. Let's have a look at how MHC class 2 presents itself on the cell surface and the process to which it does it, how it does it. So a pathogen gets phagocytized by, by the cell, and let's just say it's a macrophage. And through a process called endocytosis, the pathogen is inside an endosome. Now the macrophage has lysosomes which contains extreme acidic environments and when the acidic content is released inside the endosome containing the pathogen, the pathogen or the bad stuff, it, it becomes small peptides. It gets degraded into small peptides, small antigens. So now we have the peptides, the broken down pathogen. Now on the other side of the cell, in the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, the MHC class 2 molecule consisting of alpha and beta domains have already been th synthesized. But the MHC class 2 binding site is blocked. A protein called Li, Li, consisting basically of two parts, blocks the site of binding so that no other peptides can bind to it just yet. Now so this MHC class 2 with the Li protein leaves the ER with an endosome and because of the endosome's acidic environment the Li protein breaks down leaving behind the fragment called the clip or clip still bound to the MHC2 cleft the binding site then with clip still bound to the cleft of the MHC class 2 molecule another protein called HLM DM binds to MHC class 2 finally enabling CLIP to be released. And so the MHC class 2 molecule is complete and the endosome containing the peptides fuse with the MHC endosome and so then the peptides are able to bind to the cleft of the MHC cl class 2 molecule. 
Now, because MHC class two molecule with its specific antigen already bound, it then is confused with the cell membrane. Now, this antigen presenting cell, in this case a macrophage, is now presenting its antigen, and it will present it to T helper cells. So now, that concludes the MHC class 2. Now let's just recap the structure of the MHC molecules. So the infected cell presents the MHC class 1 molecule and consists of the alpha 1, 2, and 3 and the beta 2 complex, the domain that never changes. And it presents it to the cytotoxic T cell, cytolytic T cell, or the T killer cell, or natural killer cell which has differentiated from the T cell. The cytotoxic T cell, the T killer cell, has a CD8 receptor, which checks the MHC molecule, and checks it if it's an MHC class 1 molecule, by binding to the alpha 3 domain of the MHC class 1. And then another receptor, the T cell receptor, which, is also, which also consists of the alpha and beta domains, checks for that specific antigen. Now it should be noted that the peptide size being presented on the MHC class 1 are usually about 8 to 9 amino acids, fairly small, and it is tightly bound. And if, and if that's all okay, the infected cell, this infected cell, will die. So the antigen presenting cells presents the MHC class 2 molecule, which consists of alpha 1 and 2, and the opposite beta 1 and 2, and it presents itself to the T helper cells. The MHC class 2 molecules can bind and present much bigger peptides or antigens, about 13 to 17 amino acids in size, and because of this, this, pep this peptide is usually loosely bound. Now the CD4 receptor of the T helper cell then checks the MHC molecule and sees, it, it sees if, if it's an MHC class 2 molecule. And then another receptor, same like the T killer cells receptor, called the T cell receptor, checks if che checks for that specific antigen also. And if both the receptors of the T helper cells is happy with both the MHC class two, the MHC molecule and the antigen, the T helper cell is activated and will initiate the cell mediated response, or following that the humoral response with the B cells. So that concludes how the MHC molecules get presented on cell surfaces. Um, thank you for watching. Please comment.